Good morning guys. Today I'm out doing a little bit of ice fishing up in the mountains. It's getting towards the end of the ice season, but we still have plenty of ice up here. I got 14 inches out here on the lake. So very thankful that I had my lithium powered ion X auger today. Uh, so recently I did a video looking at uh, ice fishing for trout without a fish finder. And in a lot of my videos I'm either using the Helix 5 uh, ice fishing unit or I'm using the new Garmin Panoptics ice bundle which just give me a huge advantage. Um, I did show in that video that you don't necessarily have to have electronics to catch a lot of fish, uh, but I wanted to go and see and do a comparison on what happens if you just spend a little bit of money on a cheap fish finder. So today I'm gonna put the Lucky Laker. This is a Amazon fish finder. This is the F8, FF818 model. This is only 40 bucks. So, what do you really get for $40 out of your fish finder? Uh, so I'm going to run the pan optics and run this side by side. I'm going to see how accurate is this on depth. Does it correctly uh, mark fish? That is, are you missing fish? Or does it give you false positives? Is it showing fish when there are no fish? It also has some really rudimentary bottom structure readings for uh, rocky bottoms and weedy bottoms. So I'm going to see how well it does at differentiating those as well. So we're gonna put a $40 fish finder up against my Garmin Pan Optics, which is a $2,000 fish finder and see uh, how it performs. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is get the batteries in this thing. It runs on four AAA batteries. Comes in fairly nice packaging. It has a transducer with a float on it here. I'm probably going to have to adjust that, which it looks like I can because the ice is very deep. And then uh, it also has this head unit here. So let's go and get the batteries in there. Well, I like the float design. That cool little rubber catcher at the top there works really well. I'm going put that down in there plug this in it's got a waterproof connection that makes it kind of tight there it goes okay let's fire up the fish finder here all right okay so let's go ahead and look at this little fish finder the main thing that i wanted to see first of all was just depth accuracy so the holes here are adjacent to each other. It's reading between 9.8 and 11 feet, kind of flip-flopping back in there, which is, you know, fairly close. I'm getting 13 feet on the pan optics, um, which is about right for the straight below. There's the bottom of these boulders. There's some boulders just off to the right, which it might be that this fish finder is hitting the top of those, which are just a little bit more than 10 feet. So it's, it's pretty accurate on the depth reading, which is, you know, a really good advantage to have to know exactly what depth you're fishing. Um, the other thing that it shows is you'll see it has these different indications. It has a large boulder, small boulder, or medium boulder, and small boulder. And then it has uh, weeds, large, medium, small. And right now it's, it's reading um, large weeds and intermittently picking up boulders, which is probably right, because here I've got some weed growth on this side, and this is some boulders. Although that weeds are probably out of the range of that fish finder, but it is picking up the bottom structure. The degree of accuracy and whether it's differentiating boulders versus weeds is still up in the air right now. When I first dropped it down there, it was reading boulders more than anything. Now, one of the things is it doesn't have like a traditional fish finder. It doesn't have, um, you know, a sonar return. It just has an indication of fish. It's very simplified. Down the right hand side here, it's divided up into 10 segments, which basically just divides the water column up for you and then indicates where there's fish. And I'm getting a lot of false positives here. So you can see it's showing fish at all the depths and the pan optics is showing nothing. Um, that could just be a sensitivity issue and you can't adjust the sensitivity. So I'm gonna do that. You do it by holding down the setup button. And you'll see right there the little sensitivity. It looks like a cell phone Wi-Fi signal uh, was blinking there. So you can adjust that. So I'm gonna adjust that down. Oops. 
by hitting the enter button. So I'm going to go to low. Let's see what happens. I'm going to put it at 2. And I'm still just getting tons and tons of false positives. So I don't have a lot of faith that this is actually going to accurately mark fish locations, but we'll give it a shot here for a little bit. Maybe I'll turn it down on the sensitivity. Again to one. I'm also not certain how much the uh, return from the panoptics is going to mess with this thing. So I'll put that on low, and let's see what happens. It's got a rocky bottom return right there, and you can see the little boulder highlighted right there. So it's, it's picking up those rocks again. The leaf seems to be okay. The bottom structure thing actually seems to work, to surprise me. Um, but it is giving me this, a lot of false positives so far um, on fish on the bottom. And I, I'm wondering if it's just picking up some reflection of a uh, signal off of those rocks down there. Alright, so I'm not marking anything here. So I'm going to go to another hole, which will be a good opportunity for us to see if uh, how well this thing is consistent about depth. Put that in there. Okay. So, what's the depth there showing? It's showing 12.4 on the little fish finder from Lucky Laker, and it's showing 14 on the panoptic. So, you know, plus minus a foot there. There's probably a little bit of difference in how deep the transducers are. That's definitely marking my jig as I drop down there. Did you see that? It was interpreting that as fish. It's indicating uh, large boulders, which I can see some structure directly or just off to the right of the panoptic, which actually would put it right below the fish finder. So I think it does a fairly good job of differentiating structure on the bottom. I'd like to find a flat area to see how it compares. So it's not showing any fish, so it's not giving any false positives. That last spot, it was giving a lot of false positives near the bottom. And I don't know if that was because there's just so much structure there. It was getting a lot of different reflection. Um, but it's not picking up my jig. I'm going to bring my jig up to the top, see if it picks it up. No. Oop, there's fish. I just saw it. There it is. Nothing on that little fish finder, though. Ooh, I missed the bite. He's still there. So we didn't get any detection. Oh, there it is. It actually detected it right there. Huh. So it picked it up right as it swam under underneath it in a way. So it did detect it. But it didn't detect it very well right off the bat. And I think maybe I need to increase the sensitivity and then we'll see what goes from there. It's not giving me any false positives, which I like. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the sensitivity and then see if the next fish detects a little faster. It only got that one just as it was swimming away, and maybe it was just the angle underneath it, but it didn't pick it up right away. Oop, there was a fish right there. I'm not getting any marks. Oh, there it is. It's marking it. Picking it up. Look at that. Right below the fish finder. It's, it's accurate. It's actually picking up that fish. That's amazing. 
Oh, there's another fish just uh, a few feet down. See if it, there's that one still swimming, it's still marking that one. Yeah, it's picked up that other fish there, right there swimming about four to six feet. It's got it marked at six feet. Wow. Oh, here it's coming back. See if it picks it up again. Yes, it's picking it up. There it is, swimming around right by my jig, right near the surface there. Here, see if it picks it up again. Not very bitey. Wow, well, I'm impressed. It actually picked up those fish. It's not giving a whole lot of false positives, so fairly accurate at least at marking those fish that were shallow right underneath the transducer. Let's pick up and move. It's definitely picking up. This is a really weedy part of the lake. You can see all those weed marks on the bottom on the panoptics. And uh, it's definitely reading weedy on the fish finder. So you here you see, see the weed mark, and then those are all weeds on the bottom. So it does a pretty good job on structure. The depth it tends to read a little bit shallower than my panoptics, and I think that's partly to do the transducer height, but I think that I'm not sure how the panoptics averages out or if it just takes the measurement directly underneath it. Um, but they're usually within plus minus two to three feet of each other each time, which is actually pretty impressive. Oh, there's fish. Oof. Not marking it on the fish finder though. Nibbler. Oh, there it is. It's marking it now. Now it's marking it. Still marking it. You can see it's got about the right depth, too. Oh, here comes a fish. Ooh, I can't believe I missed that bite. He's marking it. He was marking it. Right there. Where it should have been. Still there and it's still marking it. Okay, so I had a really fun day comparing that $40 Lucky Laker Fish Finder and using my Garmin Pan Optics to verify its performance. And what were my thoughts? I was actually surprised. I didn't have a whole lot of high hopes for a $40 fish finder unit. It kind of feels very toyish. Um, the displays aren't very detailed. Um, but what did it do well? It actually did a fairly good job of marking out the depth or determining the depth. So it was off consistently a little bit shallower than the Pan Optics. And I'm not sure if that's because the Pan Optics uses a different way to measure depth across its whole range or it might have been that the transducer cord was a little bit longer um, I had to do that because of the ice depth uh, with the Lucky Laker. It also did a fairly good job of telling me whether or not the bottom was rocky or weedy. Um, sometimes it would flip-flop back and forth but overall I was actually fairly impressed with its ability to identify structure Obviously, it doesn't give you near the detail that Panoptics does, but it still gives you detail. Um, it did tend to give a lot of false positives on fish near the bottom, especially when there was a lot of structure. But I was shocked. It actually did a fairly good job of marking fish that were just below it, that were attacking my jig, uh, consistently. In fact, it, it never did fail to mark a fish. Um, obviously the Panoptics picks up the fish a lot faster because of the, the design and the wider cone, 
Uh, but that has a 45 degree cone, the Lucky Laker does, and operates at 200 kilohertz. And it did a good job. It always picked up fish that were attacking my jig, so I knew where fish at, and the depth on those fish was actually correct. So overall, I'm actually impressed. For $40, it gives you quite a bit. Obviously, you won't be able to see your lure and see how fish respond to it. But if you adjust the sensitivity correctly, it seems like it does uh, let you identify fish that are feeding in the water column. It does seem to struggle a little bit with fish near the bottom. And it does give you depth. So overall, that's not a bad investment for 40 bucks. It actually does give you a better picture than going out there blind. Anyways, I'll put links to the Lucky Laker below in the comments, or in the description, rather. And I'll also put links to the Panoptics and some of my other Panoptics videos if you're interested in those. Alright, I'll see you next time out on the ice or out on the water. Hope you guys are catching lots of fish. See you later. Bye.